Oh, welcome, everybody. So I'm Eric Cruze. I'm professor in chemistry, nanotech, uh, mostly a material uh, chemist, and have been working on the uh, biotechs by uh, developing and creating a company uh, for the uh, creating a photobioreactors for macroalgae to turn them into fuel. And because of that, I have been questioning myself regarding how as uh, scientists in the university and mostly as students, we could uh, face uh, the coming uh, problem. So I was in, invited or asked to just uh, try to wake up your brains this morning to have you being ready to ask questions and think about it. So this is uh, just a short introduction about uh, how we can introduce our discussion because the, the goal of this session to this morning is really for us to interact. The, the fact is that energy, energy is the main topic of our life and what we are, we are actually totally addicted to energy and we are using more and more energy that our parents used to, our grandparents used to. So that's a problem. We need energy, we use energy, we want energy everywhere. And the fact is that the question is how can we get more? And we are facing the fact that one easy solution is say drill, drill, drill. If you remember what uh, Sarah Palin said a couple of years ago regarding energy issue, drill, drill, drill. So this is one solution. And this solution will continue for, for long. So we are not exploring how we can, could compete. We're exploring how we could come with a new vision. Because this is our goal as scientists and uh, for you uh, as students who want to develop your activity in some uh, interesting and successful area. So we must change our vision. And our vision is actually that now we are in a world where what we do is that we have a one-way use of resources. So the resources, we extract them, we use them, and we just send the waste away. This is what we have been doing for years now. And we know this is something that will stop one day. And we have to adapt our vision and come with a way where it's mostly like a cyclical way. So what we used to look at as waste, we should identify them as potential resources that could be transformed in a way we can use them. Because we know that our Earth is limited. And we know that if everyone wants to have the same Amer American way of life that our dear neighbors have, we would need uh, between three and four planets. So you just do the math, it doesn't work. So now, the question is, because before research and innovation, there's always a dream. If we don't have a dream, if we don't have a vision, we are not creative. We are just repeating what the other guys did. So the question is about how can we come with a system where we drill, we refine, we sell, we use, and we generate, for this, waste. You could take a city, with a city waste, you could take water, it's still the same loop, the same paradigm. So what we want is to actually close the loop. That means that from this, and I took the example of CO2 because I've been working on it, but I say water, city waste, industrial waste, uh, would be the same electronic waste, I can we close the loop, take this, transform it into a system that we can enter back uh, the market. Today it's about fuels. The question is, okay, we have fossil uh, oil, we have shale gas, we have uh, a lot. Do we need uh, alternative fuels? And discovery is mostly the result of curiosity, but innovation is the result of a problem that exists where people want a solution, which means that they, want, they are ready to pay for it. So is the market ready for alternative fuels? As I said, it's not, it won't happen 
tomorrow that we switch from fossil fuel to alternative fuels. But when you look at uh, the incentives, you see that th there's a global demand for alternative fuels. The Environmental Protection Agency is planning that 1.3 billion gallons of advanced biofuels will be required. U.S. Navy goals is to use alternative fuels, 50% of it, in their fleet by 2020. All major aircraft companies, they know that it will be very difficult to use lead batteries to put in the, fr in the planes. So they are looking at that. They have been tested. Uh, all the uh, major companies have tested biofuels already, and they are exploring this, uh, this option. So we have it. It's still a long way. But what is uh, quite important is that if you look at now on the long way, the first plane, I always take this picture because I think it makes sense. The first plane, it's French, okay? The American claim it was an American, but we know that any smart <laughs> technology is coming from France. <laughs> and good wine too. <laughs> so it was the EOL of Clément Adair, 1890. One passenger over 50 meters, I think. That was the challenge. Now you look at only 100 years after, first commercial flight, Airbus A380. 850 passengers. One century is a short time, really a short time. So I think that when we look at uh, what we could do, it's not about, okay, we have the full solution uh, tomorrow. What we know, know, and this is why we created this panel, we know that we must combine expertise. And we have people from different fields working together. We must because it's about innovation. I said it's problem means solution means money. So we need industry to be involved. And we need also the expertise from people that are working in engineering, in biotechnology, which is why we uh, have initiated this uh, common uh, panel uh, today. So now, uh, the only thing I can say is that let's start. Thank you. <laughs>